news at 10. And we start now with breaking news. Another deadly blast at a plant in Ascension Parish. This time it happened at CF Industries on the other side of the river in Donaldsonville at about 6.15 tonight. WAP's Kieran Chawla was first on the scene. She joins us now live with an update and what you know. Kieran? Well, Andre, just getting some latest information coming in. What we can tell you is we have one confirmed fatality. This deadly blast coming just one day after we had the Williams Olaf fence explosion yesterday. Now we are joined live by the Ascension Parish Sheriff Jeff Wiley and Colonel Mike Edmondson with State Police. Can you tell us what is going on here? Well, let there be no doubt, it's been a trying time in Ascension Parish the last two days. It's frankly been a tragic time for families of injured and families of deceased uh, individuals. We, we, we express our condolences, sincere condolences to families of the Williams Olafans of fatalities and clearly tonight, as you know, there was uh, one fatality and, and I think uh, six wounded, uh, injured that were uh, requiring hospitalization. I'm glad to tell you that our best uh, information as of late is that the injured people at the CF incident are all in at least fair or stable condition at, at uh, several hospitals in the area, which is uh, uh, very good news, certainly for the family, but, but certainly for Ascension Paris. I want you to know that yesterday and today, we, we, we've um, the irony of this thing has not escaped us, quite frankly, of a back-to-back of -back incident of uh, such significance. Uh, yesterday, the governor spent all day with us, and today I've been in contact with him uh, within the hour, uh, uh, expressing his concerns and his support. Uh, as you know, these kinds of things require a lot of first responders and a lot of text technical expertise that uh, clearly we're blessed to have uh, and, and something that I would best leave to someone else. I just will leave with, with uh, great condolences to the uh, Morris family tonight, a family that I am aware of and acquainted with, and a Donaldsonville family, and the, uh, and the, uh, the wounded uh, individuals. I want to uh, leave you with this, that the product that is made here at CF, the fertilizer end product, was never compromised, was never in, um, in um, jeopardy. This was a, an isolated and confined area that Colonel Everson is going to uh, give you a little more technical uh, uh, picture about it, okay? And then I'll, I'll yield back and we'll try to answer questions. Thank you very much. We've also got the state police, very, Colonel very Mike Edmondson, to tell us what happened. The, the uh, words of, uh, of, the, uh, of the sheriff, I was on the phone with the governor just a few moments ago. Uh, I was in the back with the coroner. They were moving the body along with the sheriff. I can tell you he died instantly. It was an instantaneous death out there, and it was a very horrific scene to actually see. This is an ammonia plant. There is no ammonia on this plant. They went to turn around, so there was no ammonia. The only uh, material that was on site was a regulated material, nitrogen. 79% of what we breathe is nitrogen. What was happening is this nitrogen was uh, was being offloaded into like a header, uh, like a manifold, a very large manifold. And from that, where the nitrogen goes in, it's then dispersed into the vessels at the plant itself here. There was some type of catastrophic failure. We don't know if it was uh, mechanical. We don't know if it was caused by overpressurization. We'll find that out as we work with the plant, as we talk to the personnel. Unfortunately, they're injured right now, but that's the ones we're going to need to talk to to find out exactly what's taking place at the time. But well, we will find out with that. We'll work with the plant. They've been very forthcoming to us. Uh, and uh, I think the main thing is here is that the concern right off the bat was those injured. And, and that's the most horrible part of it. But again, it's, um, there's no hazardous material, nothing off site, because there was nothing here, just the nitrogen itself uh, that was actually uh, being offloaded. So uh, Trooper Sanford's here is going to release the name of the, of the deceased. Uh, unfortunately, there were seven injuries to, in tonight's incident. Uh, the name of the deceased was 56-year-old Ronald Rocky Morris. He was from Bell Rose in Assumption, in Assumption Parish here in Louisiana. Um, like the Colonel and the Sheriff said, our thoughts and our prayers are with the Morris family and the families of all those affected, not by just today's tragedy, but by the one yesterday as well. Colonel, can you break down for us, was there an explosion and was there a fire? A lot of people think there's an explosion, there's got to be a fire, there's got to be something. A mechanical failure, a mechanical explosion of this type was like a very large balloon bursting. It was a catastrophic, catastrophic failure of the, uh, of the cylinder. It's a big manifold. I saw it myself. Uh, what was a large manifold was completely opened up, and that was the, that was the mechanical explosion. No fire. Uh, the product was strictly the nitrogen that was going into, and the, and the uh, canister failed. Uh, and he was right there when it failed. So uh, we'll work with the plant. 
uh, we'll work to make sure to determine that vessel that was being offloaded, make sure it was safe, all the things will be reviewed with it. We'll work with OSHA uh, that will be on the site pretty soon, and uh, we'll be able to talk to the, to the, to the ones that were injured because they're going to be our best effort as, uh, as letting them. There were so many reports coming out that it was, uh, this was an ammonia explosion, this was, this was uh, hydrogen, there was all kinds of things. It's simply, and the people that work in plants, people right here know that, nitrogen is fed into, into a vessel that's dispersed into these larger vessels, and that's how they move product around. But then in the middle of a turnaround, nothing has taken place here. Again, the only material was the nitrogen itself, and that, that was what caused one death, a catastrophic, a catastrophic failure. We have to figure out exactly what caused that, and we will. But the plan is... Uh, they're in the middle of a turnaround, so what's, what's taking place away from that processing unit is taking place still. We were back there, Sheriff and I saw the, uh, the men working back there, the women working back there, uh, so that continues, but that particular part of the plant, uh, and again, they said originally it was an 18-wheel explode. That's not true. The nitrogen was being taken from that 18-wheeler into that particular vessel, but the, that portion of the plant is shut down, and they're working with us on that. Well, this is a huge economy. I mean, that's one of the largest producers in the country. Uh, we know that. Uh, but uh, I, I think the, the main part of it here, they weren't doing any work with it this time anyway because it was part of a turnaround. So uh, we'll, uh, the plant manager said that he'll be, he, again, he briefed y'all earlier. Uh, he'll do so again tomorrow and give you some more details exactly what will happen from there. Our concern, certainly concern the sheriff, sheriff was the personnel on the site here and any off-site impact to the uh, people within Ascension Parish. That is not the case. With two so, explosions and two deaths in two days, I mean, do we plan to step up inspections? Do what, what, what kind of thing are are we looking at here? Well, I don't know, but I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be naive here. And uh, clearly, uh, if this uh, this yard is full of the, the media and you represent the public and the public, uh, understandably, this got their attention. It's gotten our attention. I said it earlier. The, the irony of this doesn't escape me. You know, I don't know. Uh, we don't do regula regulatory much. But the sheriffs don't, frankly. And, and in this case, understand each one of them stands on its own. We told you about the uh, Williams Olefins issue yesterday. The one here today was a... a, a, a uh, a contractor and, and brought it, bringing in this product. I mean, I don't know how much um, regulation would have even prevented that. Uh, if this was a a, uh, a turnaround, which is prompted by safety, prompted by a, uh, a rebuilding of a, of, a, of a plant. So, you know, uh, I get it that, that this is uh, really extraordinary and, and uh, extremely tragic and, and back to back. I get that. I, I'm just not sure that anything that, that uh, safety could have prevented this. Uh, I'm, I'm just not sure about that. We, we live in a chemical corridor. Forty plus percent of all the hazardous material in the country either passes through, originates from, or is destined to the chemical corridor, which runs from Houston to New Orleans. Uh, so we live within that. We know that. We train for that. Uh, we prepare for that. Um, we have outstanding individuals from the Sheriff's Office, Ascension Parish, from the plant itself, and the Louisiana State Police that are working to determine exactly what happened. Uh, DEQ was out here. They were monitoring for any off-site impact. As you know, there wasn't any. But we're taking every precaution necessary to make sure that what happened here, we find out and work with the plant. Look, these plants want to operate safely. I mean, they've got men and women that invest their lives. The, the individual, Mr. Morrison, was killed in this, was, was a lifelong um, employee of this uh, plant, over 30 years, I'm being told. So certainly they understand that. We're going to work with it. We're going to figure out what happened here. Colonel, can you talk about any previous incidents at this plant? It was over pressure. That's something that we'll certainly review. But we don't know. We have a catastrophic failure. We don't know if it was overpressurization. We don't know if it was some failure of the, of the vessel itself. But we'll, we'll find out what that is, and we'll work with OSHA to, to do that. Can you talk about any previous incidents at this plant? Uh, I, I heard the plant manager talk about something in 2000. I'm not aware of all the details of exactly what happened with that. Thank you guys very, very much. We appreciate it. So again, we are at the CF Industries plant where we've had a deadly rupture, actually, of one of the vessels. It's a nitrogen. A pumper truck was actually offloading nitrogen onto a vessel, and that's when the vessel ruptured. Again, one person dead. State police confirming the identity of that person being 57-year-old Ronald Morris from Bell Rose. For now, that is the latest from here. We will send it back to you, Andre. From this 
second uh, day in a row uh, situation along the Mississippi River, one of the large plants that lines our river. Now, you heard Colonel Edmondson mention the uh, event in the year 2000. We can give you some information about that. Uh, of course, it, this is North America's largest nitrogen uh, operating plant. So it's a, an enormous place here in Donaldsonville. This is file video from 2000. Uh, and what happened then, it was a similar event uh, and a, actually a search of the federal safety records shows that the company was fined nearly $150,000 for what was an explosion then that killed three people and injured eight people. OSHA's inspection of the company at that time resulted in 12 serious citations uh, that were related to confined space entry, process safety management, and uh, personnel protective equipment. Uh, there have not been problems since that time, but that's what uh, uh, Colonel Ed Edmondson had referred to, uh, the event that happened in the year 2000, uh, where lives were lost and there were injuries when there was an explosion. Uh, this not an explosion, a type of blast though, and confined to that small area, uh, no one around the area uh, at risk whatsoever. It was something that was strictly on the plant, but nonetheless, uh, fatal and, and a, a tragedy there tonight in Donaldsonville. Uh, also today in other news, uh, a second worker has died now as a result of yesterday's explosion at the Williams Elephants plant in Geismer. 47-year-old Scott Thrower died about 1 o'clock this afternoon. Much of his body was badly burned. He leaves behind a wife and a daughter. Uh, here now a picture of the other man who died and friends and family uh, members of Zachary Green talked and remembered him today. Uh, he had been an employee at the plant uh, since uh, just October, as a matter of fact. Best friends, he was, he was like my brother. Uh, best man at my wedding. Yeah. How did you react? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't believe it at first. I was just kind of numb. 911, not sure there could be an emergency. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm out on a piece of property survey on Highway 30 and they had a huge explosion uh, near the intersection of Highway 30 and 3115. Highway 30 where? Highway 30 on uh, right about the Ascension Parish and Inverville Parish. Right about the line. And uh, just heard a big explosion, big plume going up in the sky. I see fire from here. Uh, you see actual visible flames? Yes, ma'am. Two, three hundred feet in the air. All right, we got. Uh, we're going to have units headed that way. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are they willing to see that there could be a baby? Yes, ma'am. I'm down in. I'm taking turns. Have uh -huh. just had a major explosion in a whole lot of the units. I don't mean to give you a bad time. I'm scared to death right now. I'm trying to get away from it. Do you see any flames or any? Oh, the whole unit's on fire. Flames. What name? Flames on fire. Yes, ma'am. Do you see any flames? Now you can listen to the full 911 calls. They're on our website right now, wafd.com. That from the Geismer plant. The explosion at the Williams plant yesterday in Geismer was definitely an eye opener for some first responders. Several Geismer firefighters were at the plant battling the fire. Some say it was the biggest fire they've ever seen. Um, it was it was definitely a cause for me because you you don't really see things like that often it was within the, uh, the fire business, but it was kind of a, a, a feeling you just have to get over and, you know, you have to jump in there and do what you have to do, you know, to uh, ensure the safety of the other people that was involved. And those guys from Geismer, those firefighters from that department, they were the first to be called to fight the fire. Several other crews quickly got on scene also as they responded, uh, trying to get the thing under control. Emergency responders from across the capital region, uh, they sprang into action after yesterday's explosion, including the staff at St. Elizabeth Hospital in Gonzales. The hospital's director of marketing, John Hirsch, says each plan has a very specific instruction for their people on their staff. They do at least two drills each year, in fact, one using actual people, as there would be patients to make sure that everyone knows exactly where to go if and when disaster strikes. With us tonight, you're not doing a double take. Back to our top story tonight. For the second day in a row, a major problem at a local chemical plant, the ones that line the Mississippi River. This one, CF Industries in Donaldsonville. WAP's Karen Chawla is live on the scene still. She was first on the scene with the latest. Karen?
Well, Andre, we were talking about another deadly blast just one day after Williams Oil Offense happened here. Now, this one happened around 6.15. We're at the CF Industries here in Donaldsonville. I want you to actually take a listen. The plant manager told us just a little while ago what happened. While supplying that nitrogen, a particular header or small vessel ruptured. We had eight people injured and one fatality and uh, everything's secure. We use, the, we use the pumper truck to supply nitrogen to the equipment in the plant. So it was offloading nitrogen? Yes, putting it in, the, in a vessel in the plant, but a small vessel that's sort of like a distribution header is what ruptured. I don't know the exact size of it. Now, Mr. Fry confirmed that one person died. State police just released his name, Ronald Rocky Morris, 55 years old of Bell Rose. Also, Mr. Fry said eight injuries. State police corrects us on that. It is now seven injuries. Of course, that is the latest here from Donaldsonville. We will continue to bring you the latest as it unfolds. For now, Andre, we will send it back to you. All right.